Look at that big beak, eh? Oh yeah, she can crack a walnut like it's nothing. Like that was a piece of wood that she just yeah. broke. That wow. wasn't broken before. <laughs> so, or is that just too weird I was watching that mojo video about uh, five facts or something like that about veganism and a bunch of people were making replies to it and everything and I got talking to some people about uh, about veganism and vegetarianism and so I just want to talk about a couple things it's probably a bit of a rant all right and I'll try to keep it quick um, all right here's the thing right someone I was talking to was like Bro, man, you know what? You got science facts proven, all these different things, and uh, the truth is that why we even bother going vegetarian or vegan? Because, like, man, you're gonna give it up. Everybody's gonna give it up, right? And I was like, no, man, that's not true. Not everybody gives it up. But there is an interesting idea that more and more people in the West, and if you think about it, okay, first of all, I live in the West. I live in North America, and. Um, I, I guess I live in a society where we have food, right? Even poor people have food. So we, we can get, you know, tomatoes in January and, and bananas at any time of year. And so it's not that hard for us to live healthy, right? So here's the thing, right? We have all this food that's available to us and we have the internet and we know what goes on with factory farms and stuff like that and so there's a group of people who say hey I want to go vegetarian or I want to go vegan or I want to cut meat out or I want to eat grass-fed meat and that's the interesting thing about where I live is that we don't live kind of like hand-to-mouth anymore we we've actually moved up um, you know starting to reach this type of like enlightenment or ideas are filtering into us like it's not rare for somebody nowadays to say hey you know I know a vegetarian or I know a vegan or I know someone who was vegetarian or someone who was vegan there's people out there who do it for a few weeks you know and then they then they maybe they go back to eating meat on the weekend because you know they go with their friends or something like that that's because we're all kind of moving up. And there'll always be a group of people who are like, I won't move, I won't change for nothing. You know, I was just at this big grocery store and kind of like it, uh, an industry town and you can see all the people walking around, you know, buying the milk and buying the meat and you know, drinking it from the cradle to the grave without really thinking too much. But at the same time, you see people who are thinking about it. And here's some of the reasons why I, that I feel it's because if you if you look at like our grandparents and our great grandparents who lived basically rural lives, right? They come from the farm, they come from smaller towns, and they lived through the depression and you know world wars, and then they had to rebuild. And what happened was by like the 1960s and 70s, these people started to have prosperity and money and nice homes and nice cars and so all of a sudden now you have restaurants to go to to spend that extra money you can order hamburgers whenever you want you can order chicken you can get ready-made meals and bring them home and sit in front of the TV and watch them or just drive your car and order through a drive-thru something that their parents and grandparents never even heard of like that was you know like it would be rare for people at the turn of the century to go out to a restaurant to eat and you know to bring the whole family you watch those old TV shows and you see you know the whole family going out for for pizza or something and they all put on their suit and tie and go on out it's weird so by by the 60s 70s and 80s people were all going out it was new it was fresh it was a sign of prosperity the kids didn't want to live like their grandparents and great-grandparents right who 
grew up on the farm, who grew up maybe poor, and they ate the staples, which would have been like rice and potatoes, you know, for your starches, fruits and vegetables when they grow in season, probably little bits of meat here and there you wouldn't eat, you know, too much because you have to make it last, right? So 40, 50 years ago, this all changed. The world changed and everybody started eating whatever they wanted. And that's where we are to this to this day in the West, that everybody is just eating whatever they want at any time of the year. It's crazy to think if you can't go and get tomatoes or you can't go and get an apple. But what happened was people now, you know, around 2000 started looking around 2000, 2005, 2010, 2015, and we're looking back at the people who had it all. And we're like, they're obese, they're, um, they're getting sick, you know, what's, what's going on? They have it all. They have this excess of food. They, they don't have this super hard life. Why is this this way? And so all of a sudden it's like, hey, let's not eat their diet anymore. Let's switch over to maybe a more whole foods diet. And that starts to trickle down to us to this day. We're looking at it and we're saying, hey, this is pretty cool, man. Like I don't have to eat all those foods and I don't have to go and sit in the doctor's office all the time. Maybe there's a way around it, right? And I'm sure in the future, some kids might see all of us die, you know, our great grandchildren, and they might say, maybe we should switch back to that. I don't know. But if you look at it in developing nations, and this is where like the meat industry and that the meat industry here is still trying to hold on or change. It's like now you can go out and buy almond milk or cashew milk or soy milk, right? The, the dairy industry is realizing like, wow, we got to do something to grab that market because there's lots and lots of people shifting to something new, shifting away from that dairy, heavy dairy, heavy meat. And now we want vegetables. Now we want organics. Now we want whole foods. We don't want the crap that's going to kill us. The meat industry knows this and they're like, wow, we got to change because times are changing. Dinosaurs must die like no effect says, right? Then you look over at, uh, you know, the developing nations. They kind of are where we were back then, you know, back in the 60s, 70s and 80s, a lot of those uh, developing nations, those people still ate rice and potatoes and vegetables and they can only eat in season and they can only do, you know, kind of the, the peasant food, legumes and all those things. Now all those people in the developing nations have excess money and they're getting that money. They don't want to live like their grandparents do. They want to live, they want hamburgers and french fries and refined sugars and sweets and treats and that's where they're going that's the direction they're going and so they're going to take like a lot of heavy advertising from the meat and dairy industry and all those big corporations because they can see that those people are where we were at one time so to all the people who are like well maybe i won't do it because i'll give it up or 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 you know however it works don't don't think like that as we're becoming more and more enlightened, you know, we're, we're striving for better. That's why we're getting out and getting exercise and going out and getting sun and fresh air is because as humans, we want to thrive. We want to live optimally and we're learning how we can do that in a better way. And the developing nations that are coming up, they just want to thrive and do better and they want something different than their parents had. And so they look at their parents as being, and their grandparents as being like from the village. Now they're in the city, you know, like things are fresh and new for us. We want convenience we want it fast. We want it tasty. You know, we don't want to think too much right now because we're moving into a new direction. Whereas we're already there. We're already reaching that, that level to where we are in a way kind of going back except that we live in this beautiful time where we can like get anything at any point in time. Dude, I'm just ranting here, thinking about a few things, but I was just, I had to capture it because you know, I was just talking about something. Don't, don't let someone tell you that you can't achieve something because you'll probably give it up. Or 
you know, man, most people don't or because, you know, someone labels you, you know, you meet people all the time who are like, yeah, man, I'm vegetarian and then, you know, but I eat fish and I eat chicken when I'm loaded or whatever. Don't even worry about those people, man. At least they're trying, right? And if they aren't trying, at least they're doing a little bit. But for yourself, don't worry about what the other people say. Try to be the best that you can be, right? Be optimal, thrive for something better. And if you know in your head that it's the good fight, it's the right fight to, you know, not support like factory farms or support cruelty in that way. And you know that it's deep down inside that it's the right thing to do. Keep striving to make it better. Hey, gentle. Well, I'm not worried about her losing, trust me. Her and I have an understanding. <laughs>